for this is rebellious people refuse to listen to the instructions of the Lord. Verse 9. This is rebellious people who what? Refuse to listen to the instructions of the Lord. For you will do that which is evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger with the work of your hands. Listen to what he warned Israel. He said, when I go, you're going to turn away from the ways of God. You're going to have evil befall you in the latter days. For when I bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to their fathers, and they have eaten and are satisfied and become prosperous, then they will turn to other gods and serve them and spurn me and break my covenant. Our churches no longer have the power of God to attract the people in many circles. So they've gone down to Egypt and borrowed its music, its dancing, its entertainment, hoping to get the crowd back. It's not a passion for souls, it's just a passion for crowds. Church growth at any cost. I grieve when I think of all the teen towns, workers, and parachurch ministers all across the country parked in front of their TV sets hour after hour after hour with the world going to hell. How do you sit there and watch what comes out of the very pits of hell? How do you sit there allowing your spiritual life to just ooze out of you? And I'm going to look you right in the eye and tell you the day has already come that you can no longer keep the anointing of the Holy Ghost and sit in front of your idol. My Bible says, Thou shalt bring no abomination into your house. You shall hate it, you shall detest it, lest you become a curse just like unto it. The scripture, or the prophet Isaiah says, This apostate is going to include a rejection of the message of holiness, judgment, and repentance. Did you hear that? It was a mouthful. I'm going to repeat it. The apostasy includes a total rejection of the message of holiness, judgment, and repentance. They say to the seers, you must not see visions. And to the prophets, you what? You must not prophesy to us what is right. Speak to us pleasant or smooth words. Prophesy illusions. An apostate church wants nothing to do with visions or prophecies of men of righteousness. They don't want anything to do with it. You know that's the gospel. You know that's the truth. They want to hear messages. They, they want nothing that disturbs the status quo, nothing to upset this successful world in which they move and live. They refuse any kind of correction. Everything today is being excused under the banner of love. We're getting ready to love the devil. This is a perverted love. I want nothing to do with it. It's all cliches. It has nothing to do with this book. Our people clamor for entertainment. They flock by the thousands now to concerts and plays and social gatherings while they ridicule the prophets. They mock what they call the doomsday preachers and they prefer the illusions. They don't want any preacher or evangelist to tell them the hard truth and they don't want the, the sword of the Lord to come forth in their congregations. They say, preach to us smooth things. Bless us. Make us happy. Make us feel good. They especially reject the message of holiness and separation. Verse 11. They say, get out of the way. Turn aside from the past. Let us hear no more about the holy, holy one of Israel. They say, no more preaching of this holy one of Israel. Jeremiah was sent to prophesy against the apostate Jews. The Lord's own people. You know what God said to Jeremiah? He, he said, I send you forth with my word of judgment and holiness and righteousness, but they will fight you. The dread of the Lord is no longer in them. They prefer to drink from cisterns rather than the living water. And I'll tell you what, when the word of God comes forth in its power and unction, it'll do one of two things. It'll either break you or harden you. It'll break you or harden you. It'll judge you. Let us hear no more of this Holy One of Israel. Turn aside. We don't want you in our churches. Why is it that people are flocking to prosperity preachers? Why is it when you preach prosperity, you can draw a crowd simply because it suits the lifestyles of those who gather? They flock to these teachers because they feel comfortable with them because of their world of materialism. They're in no mood to give up anything or to sacrifice or to hear about crosses or losses. They're into buying and acquiring, enjoying and climbing the social ladder. Folks, if that's all I was going to do, if I wanted to, if I wanted to get rich and if I, if I had all these things and I felt condemned, I'd go to a preacher and set my mind at ease. But when you've got the fire of the Holy Ghost burning in your heart and Jesus Christ is the head, you can't go near it because the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn it out. But a 
apostate church simply endures the prophetic voice. They pass it by with a condescending smile. I'm going to read to you. Listen to Ezekiel 33. Don't turn, but just listen to it. He said, they come to you as my people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear your words, but they don't do them. For they do the lustful desires expressed by their mouth, and their heart goes after their own gain and their idols. And behold, you are to them like a sensual song by one who has a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument. And they hear your words, but they do not practice them. Oh, it, it grieves my heart. I, after writing the book of the trumpet, books, I, I spent hours and days, weeks, in fact, months shut in with God. When the Spirit of God would come upon me, I'd begin to prophesy against the idolatry of television and rock music of devils in our churches. And I could feel the wrath of God against it. And I'd go in the backyard and prophesy to the trees because I didn't think anyone would listen. I'd just raise my voice and prophesy. You've been bringing unclean offerings. You've brought bruised and bleeding lambs to my table and the tables of the Lord are filled with vomit. And I was prophesying and prostrate on the grass and feeling the wrath of God breathing down my neck against it all. And I get up and I bleed my heart out. And I can quote a hundred scriptures against this kind of idolatry. And, and, and people come up and pat me on the back and say, good preaching, Brother Dave, I believe it. And go right back that very night and sit and watch filth. I don't understand how anyone who loves God with all their heart I don't understand anyone who knows that one day soon they're going to stand before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't see how you can sit before your idols anymore knowing that you stand before His holy eyes. But they don't do it. They're still going to go about their lustful desires. They love to hear it. They love to say amen. But it doesn't affect them. Just a sensuous song. And according to the prophecy of Isaiah, the apostate church of the last day is not going to accept this message of repentance, whether I preach it or any, any other man of God preaches it. It's not going to be accepted by the masses. It's going to be accepted only by a holy, separated view. Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel has said, what? In repentance and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and trust, in quietness and trust is your strength. But you were not willing and you said no. You're not willing. You said no. The message of the Holy Ghost to this last day church is that in repentance and rest is your only hope. The only hope left for the church is to return to him with all their heart and to get out of Egypt and the world. Tell this sensuous, prosperous, self-centered generation of Christians Tell them that their only hope is in repentance. Tell them that. See how many listen. They don't even have time to consider the question, let alone the answer. Isaiah says they will reject the message of repentance. They'll reject the message that in the last day, the thought of quietness and rest and simple trust. God's going to terrorize this nation. He said 1,000 will flee at the threat of one man. You shall flee at the threat of five until you are left as a flag on a mountain top and as a signal on a mountain. He said, you're just going to be a shell of what you once were. Just going to be a testimony to what you were. Just a, just a flagpole, not even a flag. God said, I'm going to terrorize the nation. You're going to be only a shadow of what you once were. The kingdom of self and pride and ambition is coming down. The warnings of Isaiah will not be heeded. My warnings will be scoffed at. And when it comes and it will come, what good are all those messages of prosperity going to be then? There's so little yearning for Jesus Christ, so little yearning for the Lord. God said in Jeremiah 2, 32, my people forgot me days without number. If you go to a dead, dry church, the first thing you do when you get on fire for God is the church is going to call you crazy. The rest of the people, they're going to ostracize you, think you've gone nuts. Why? Because you're seeking the Lord with all your heart. You're not playing games anymore. You're... Go ahead and get rid of your television and see how many people laugh at you. Our whole staff gathered up $15,000 worth and we shot them with shotguns and everybody laughed at us. Somebody said, Solomon, I don't sell idols. And don't tell me it's not an idol. Why is all the furniture facing? Look at verse 21. And your ears will hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or turn to the left. These people are not going to be confused or burned out, are they? They're going to hear a word, a pure word. This is the way. Walk in it. 
something else they're going to do. They're going to tear down all their idols. Look at verse 22. And you will defile your graven images overlaid with silver and your molten images plated with gold. You will scatter them as an impure thing and say to them, Be gone! Be gone! They're going to tear down every idol. They're going to say, I can't stand before a holy God with these idols anymore. Be gone. That's enough. Be gone. Hey, what in the world is so difficult about getting that idol out of your house? What is it holding you? Come on. What is it? Give me one Holy Ghost reason. But it's not just that idol. It's all idolatry. All of it. Some of you have a pornographic refrigerator. You're so in love with food, it's an idol. 